What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can catch me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. And today's video is an exploration, I guess you could call it, of 13 of the most relevant 2023 free agent running backs. There's a lot more than that who will be free agents. These are the most like fantasy relevant guys. Um, we're going to look at like how well they've played in the last couple of years, um, whether or not I think they will re-sign with their current teams, you know, what could be next for them, and whether you should be like buying, selling, holding a dynasty based on all of those different factors. Let's get into it. <laughs> First of all, in the last three years, there have been 105 free agent running backs who signed contracts during that free agent period. There have been a lot more free agent running backs, period, but 105 of those guys have signed contracts. Of those 105, only 18 of them signed with their original team, signed with their the old team, and that's that's 17% of them. And based on these 13 guys that I'm going to look at, that means if, you know, that historical trend continues, that means only like two of these guys are going to end up with their original teams. So this list is probably filled with guys who, you know, are going to be elsewhere next season. Before I even looked at that data, I had only identified two of these guys as guys that I expect to re-sign um, with their current teams. Just kind of lucked out on the, on the percentages there. I'm falling out the way they did. But... The first guy I want to talk about is Saquon Barkley. Um, he's the best player on this list. His deal is up. He's still in his rookie deal. Um, I believe this would be the year of his fifth year option. After 2022, he'll be a free agent. And a couple factors to consider with him is, you know, obviously he was like really good early on. Great pass catcher. He was an efficient runner his first couple years with the Giants. And then he had that 2020 season where he got hurt, um, hadn't played well before getting hurt. And then last year, he played much of the season, um, was not very good on a per-touch basis. Um, he was really outplayed by Devontae Booker and his uh, his box-adjusted efficiency rating, which measures like per-carry output relative to his teammates given the box counts that he's seeing. The average carry for Saquon Barkley was worth just 92% the output of the carries for the other guys in the team. He was succeeding on fewer of his carries than the other guys in the Giants were, negative 5% relative success rate. So he was just like a net negative, really, on the ground last Last year, net negative on the ground in 2020 um, before getting hurt. It's been 2019 since we've seen Saquon Barkley play well in the NFL. And I have him currently marked down as a guy who I don't expect to re-sign with the Giants. And part of that is is I do expect him to be far enough removed from the injuries in 2022 that I think he'll play well. I think he'll be a good player. Um, he's, you know, up there in Dynasty for me. Um, I'd be willing to take shots on him in redraft. Like, I think he's going to be good this season. But the current regime with the Giants, you know, their new GM, I can't remember what his name is, but um, he was the former, you know, he's formerly from the, from the Bills front office. And... I think they don't want to make the same mistake. I don't think they want to double down on this Dave Gettleman draft pick where they took Barkley. He was really good early on, and yet it still wasn't worth it. Like, you can't take a running back second overall, even if it's a Saquon Barkley level prospect. He was good early on. It still wasn't worth it. He's been bad lately. He's been hurt lately. Even if he's good again this season, I don't see them re-signing him. I see them moving on from that mistake. And I think some dumb team is going to give him a bunch of money, given, you know, that I think he'll play well. Some dumb team, maybe it's the Raiders, maybe it's, I don't know who else it would be, but like, you know, some, some stupid team is going to pay him a bunch of money to be their starting running back. But I think... I'm selling Saquon Barkley in Dynasty based on his current ADP. I think he'll be good this year. You know, I think he'll probably be good with whatever team ends up signing him, but I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze at his current ADP. Uh, the next guy is Josh Jacobs, who's been solid. You know, his box adjusted efficiency rating over 100% last year, positive relative success rate. He's been a solid runner for the Raiders. He hasn't been incredible, definitely not worth a first round pick. And I think this is a situation where, you know, Mayock is gone. This, this is a new uh, front office regime as well. I think they want to move Move on from Jacobs. I don't think they're doubling down on the stupid decisions of the previous regime either. And this is, you know, a 2023 draft class that's full of stud running backs. I see the Raiders being a team that could potentially sign Barkley. I think they could potentially go with one of these younger guys in the 2023 class. Jacobs has been completely fine. There's nothing wrong with him. I just don't think he's going to be worth the money to the Raiders that he'll probably get on the open market. I would imagine he signs with some team in some sort of like committee role, maybe a Melvin Gordon type role. He's a hold for me in Dynasty. I recently put together my Dynasty running back rankings, and I'm actually a little bit higher on Jacobs than uh, consensus is. And so I think 
you know, especially this season, I see him as being, you know, a solid RB2, maybe fringe RB1. But after this season, I don't believe he gets re-signed. And because of that, I don't see some other teams signing him to be some sort of like undisputed RB1 on their team, like he's been with the Raiders. The next guy is David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs' classmate from that rookie class. And he started out his career really hot. He had positive box adjusted efficiency rating, positive success rate um, in 2019, had a really high box adjusted efficiency rating in 2020. And then last season, Season, fell off quite a bit, negative 7% relative success rate, only 93% box adjusted efficiency rating. He was just really bad last year. And I think given that he doesn't have like a lot of athletic juice to begin with, you know, maybe last season was a sign that he's starting to fall off. I don't even like, I'm not even confident that he's going to play well this year. And if he doesn't play well, I see the Bears like re upping in the 2023 draft, letting David Montgomery walk. He's another guy who could sign somewhere in a, like a Melvin Gordon type situation um, to, you know, like pair with a younger back, be part of a committee, something like that. But I'm selling him in Dynasty. I think given the signs we saw last year on a per touch basis, he just wasn't very good. I'm trying to get out early rather than late on David Montgomery. Uh, the next guy is Rashad Penny, who, you know, obviously has been hurt throughout his career, but he's been really efficient every time he's been healthy, especially last season that that final like six game stretch. He was arguably the best pure runner in the NFL on a per touch basis in the last six games of last season. And I don't see him re-signing with uh, the Seahawks either because of the drafting of Kenneth Walker, because the injuries that Rashad Penny's seen throughout his career. I anticipate that he'll play well. I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, starts over Kenneth Walker for the first couple weeks or holds him off, you know, deep into the season or if this is like a 1A, 1B situation. I also wouldn't be surprised to see Kenneth Walker just steal the job. I think Rashad Penny is going to play well and I could see him being a guy who you know, like Jacobs, like Montgomery, gets signed to like a one-year deal somewhere um, in a Melvin Gordon type situation. But I could see Rashad Penny like actually making an impact in that situation. I would see David Montgomery being a disappointment there. Jacobs would probably be pretty blah. But I think Penny is probably ideally deployed as like a 1A, 1B where he can like stay healthy, stay fresh, but come in and just like smash on a per-touch basis. I'm buying Rashad Penny in Dynasty. I think he's underpriced. I think the chances that he just like plays a larger role than people are expecting him to in Seattle this season are higher than people want to believe. And then I think beyond Seattle, if he doesn't sign there again, I could see him being a really good, you know, like situational RB1 in weeks where he's just the undisputed lead back in whatever situation he ends up in next. Miles Sanders is the next guy. He has been kind of boom bust on a per touch basis throughout his career. Um, kind of tracks with the reputation he has as like an athletic guy, but a pretty raw runner. Very similar to like the Jacobs and Montgomery situations. I see these teams just kind of like moving on. Miles Sanders has not been that good. He's not been that good as a receiver, hasn't been that good as a runner. He'll probably play fine this season, but I see him ending up in some sort of committee situation, not in Philadelphia. Um, I'm selling him in Dynasty. I just don't feel strongly about him as like a good player. Um, the next guy is Melvin Gordon, who is currently on a one-year deal with the Broncos, pairing with Javante Williams. We should expect Javante Williams to take a little bit larger role in that backfield than he had last season, where Melvin Gordon was like right there with him on a per-touch basis, slightly better than him on a per-carry basis. And I would imagine that they don't re-sign Melvin Gordon and that they just opt to go with Javante Williams next season. But Melvin Gordon has shown no signs of slowing down, and I sh I think we should expect him to play well in 2022 and see him, like, re-up with another, like, mercenary one-year deal type situation with some other team going forward. And right now he's being priced in Dynasty like he just has no role in this offense at all. And so I'm buying. I think the odds that he, you know, is the 1A, 1B with Javante Williams are higher than consensus believes. If Javante Williams goes down, Melvin Gordon is like an easy RB1 throughout the season. And he's still a good player. Like he's 29 years old. He's old, but he's still good. Like you got to buy that guy when he's going like outside the top 50 running backs in Dynasty. So um, another guy in sort of a similar situation is Kareem Hunt. The difference between him and Melvin Gordon at this point, despite Melvin Gordon being a couple years older, is that Kareem Hunt has just been awful on a per touch basis, on a per carry basis for the past couple seasons. It's been since he left Kansas City, um, he hasn't been a net positive on a per touch basis on the ground. He's, you know, produced positive outcomes relatively often, but like he just doesn't have the juice that he once had. And I would not be surprised to see just like the wheels completely fall off this season. Dearness Johnson is better than him. I think Jerome Ford has more juice than him. I could see his his role in Cleveland just being like severely reduced this year. And I would not be surprised to see him play poorly, not play much 
relative to how, how much run he's gotten in the last couple of years. And then he would be the one guy on this list that I wouldn't be surprised if he just went unsigned during this next free agency period. So I'm selling Kareem Hunt and Dynasty. Alexander Madison is the next guy I want to talk about. Um, he's been, you know, really solid as the the guy who just steps in when Dalvin Cook misses his three games a year. Um, you know, he's a fringe RB1 every time that happens. But I don't think he adds much when he's on the field. Like, he he's just kind of like a jag who can do everything. Like, he, he's not an especially good runner. He's not an especially good receiver. But he's also not bad at any of those things. So he just steps into the role and does fine. And, you know, that has some value. But I don't know that it has, like, re-up the contract type value. I think some other team will probably sign him to a similar role. Maybe they want him to be part of a committee. But I could easily see the Vikings just going with, you know, Nwang Wu or Ty Chandler or Bryant Kobach or some guy in the 2023 class who they view as, you know, the backup up to Dalvin Cook, maybe with a little bit more juice than Alexander Madison. Maybe Cook falls off this year. You know, he's he's got the, the injuries that just keep adding up. If he falls off, maybe they just look to replace Cook in the 2023 draft, and then it's just kind of like a fully remade backfield here. But I think the most likely scenario is that Alexander Madison continues to just kind of play fine. He does sort of like signs in sort of a similar situation with some other team. He's a hold in Dynasty for me. I'm not looking to acquire him. I'm not especially looking to sell him. He just kind of is what he is. Um, The next guy I want to talk about is Ronald Jones, who you know, was a little bit worse last season, but throughout his career has been really effective on a per carry basis. We know he's not a good pass blocker. We know he's not a good pass catcher, but he signed with the Chiefs. He's not going to be expected to catch the ball. He's not going to be expected to pass block, but I think this is a really good fit where, you know, where the Chiefs running backs consistently see some of the lightest box counts in the league. Ronald Jones has been really effective on a per carry basis. He's going to eat whenever he touches the ball. I wouldn't be surprised to see him, you know, just kind of become the main guy here. I just think this is a really good situation for him. And I think he's one of the guys in this list that I expect to re-sign with his current team next offseason. You know, I could see him being a chief for the next few years. He's still a young guy. He's being priced right now like people don't want anything to do with him in Dynasty. I'm buying Ronald Jones in Dynasty right now. The next guy is Marlon Mack, who we all know the story. I'm in on Marlon Mack. You know, he was he was good early on in his career with the Colts, suffered the Achilles injury, was bad on a per-touch basis on like, I don't know, not very many carries before Jonathan Taylor took over um, completely last season. And now he's in Houston. Um, they took Damian Pierce in the fourth round. I think there's still a good chance that Marlon Mack could be a key part of this backfield. There's reports out of camp that he's looking good, that he's looking explosive. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see this backfield be one that... Um, takes one of these strong 2023 backs, and that guy's the starter going forward. But I would imagine Marlon Mack plays well this year, whether in a starting role or a part-time role, a handcuff role, whatever that looks like. I think Marlon Mack plays well this year, and then turns into like a Melvin Gordon type situation where he's just signing like mercenary deals to play like committee back, handcuff type roles in different backfields. But I'm buying Marlon Mack. He is dirt cheap in Dynasty still. Um, I think he still has a chance of being an effective player. You lose nothing if he turns out to not be healthy. But if he is healthy, you know, he he probably is going to play well this year and either re-up in Houston or sign a similar deal somewhere else where he can be a part of a backfield. Maybe like an Alexander Madison type situation where he signs somewhere where he's the backup to a good running back. When that guy gets hurt, he steps in. I think there's a lot of upside in Marlon Max Dynasty ADP right now because he's dirt cheap. Um, the next guy I want to talk about is Tony Pollard. You know, everybody knows has been the more efficient back in Dallas the last couple seasons. He's been more efficient than Zeke. He's more explosive than Zeke. He's a better pass catcher than Zeke. And I think the Cowboys will want to re-sign him. And I could see Tony Pollard wanting to re-sign in Dallas. I think this is just kind of like a good situation, a good fit for him. But I don't know that they'll have the money to make it happen. And I think Tony Pollard is going to get a lot of interest on the open market. I see him signing like a Tevin Coleman, Chase Edmonds type deal with some other team who views him as like, this guy could be our RB1. You know, he would be great in San Francisco. He would be great in like a, a, a Shanahan, you know, type system where he can use his speed out in space. I'm selling a dynasty though. I think people are pricing him. He's like in the top, I forget what his ADP is, but like, but I'm selling Tony Pollard in dynasty right now. I think the best chance of him making good on his current ADP is Zeke gets hurt and Tony Pollard steps in and gives you RB1 weeks for, you know, the last half of this season. But then even if, you know, Zeke is still under contract for the next few years, they're not going to cut Zeke 
and just give the backfield to Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard is going to play well and then probably end up somewhere else where we're even like these, these Tevin Coleman, Jarek McKinnon type dudes in similar situations in the past. It just rarely works out for these guys who are like 1B handcuff type dudes who get RB1 money. It rarely works out. I don't think Tony Pollard is any different. I'm selling a dynasty. Daryl Henderson is the next guy, and he's been awesome on a per-touch basis every season of his career so far. He was really good last year. I anticipate him playing well this season. I think there's a, you know, a higher chance that he gets a decent role in this offense and that it's not just like completely Cam Akers being the bell cow. I think the Rams would be smart to rotate in and out with these guys. I think they're more comparable talents than people generally think, and so... I think Daryl Henderson plays well this season. I think very similar to the Tony Pollard situation. I think he goes and tries to get good money on the open market. I think he will get good money on the open market. The difference between Tony Pollard and Daryl Henderson is just their current price in Dynasty right now. It makes Tony Pollard a sell. It makes Daryl Henderson a clear buy to me. He's dirt cheap in Dynasty. Get this guy on your team. He's proven over, you know, multiple weeks on a good offense to be an effective player on a per-touch basis. He's got pass-catching upside that I don't think has been fully tapped into. And even if guys like Tevin Coleman, Jarek McKinnon have like disappointed before, you don't have to buy Daryl Henderson in 2023 when his price shoots up. If you have him now or you can acquire him now and then you just profit and sell him next offseason before he disappoints relative to that cost. So right now, I'm buying Daryl Henderson. A year from now, I'm probably selling Daryl Henderson. The last guy I want to talk about is Devin Singletary, who has been okay so far in his career. Like, there are the issues with the Bills just don't use their running backs that much. They don't throw to their running backs that much. Devin Singletary has been okay. I would imagine he plays fine again this season. I could see him re-upping with the Bills on some sort of, like, team-friendly deal. They come to an agreement. But I, I view this as just being a committee going forward. He's one of the guys that I think re-signs, but... You know, they got Zach Moss, they got, uh, they still have Duke Johnson, they they just drafted James Cook, Devin Singletary. I think the Bills are building their team in a very smart way. They know to not allocate like heavy resources to the running back position. I think Devin Singletary ends up back here in some sort of committee type situation. If he leaves, I think he's, you know, hoping to get like Tony Pollard, Daryl Henderson, Tevin Coleman, Chase Edmonds type money. And I don't think he's good enough to get that. And I don't think he's good enough to like make good on that, even if he does get it. So I'm selling Devin Singletary in Dynasty. Those are the guys I'm talking about, all 13 of them. I'm buying Rashad Penny. I'm buying Melvin Gordon. I'm buying Ronald Jones, Marlon Mack, and Daryl Henderson. I think the only two guys here who end up with their original teams are Ronald Jones and Devin Singletary. Thanks for checking out the video. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, leave a comment. I would love to argue with you in the comments section about whatever your heart desires. Peace.